They say that when you lose hope, you lose everything. When you give up hope, you've lost everything. So there's always hope. When you have hope, you have everything, man. When you have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have everything, man. You have everything that you could ever possibly need. I don't care who likes me. I don't care who respects me. If I have favor with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man, forget you. Seriously. I don't need you to give me my dignity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to me. Because on the flip side of this, our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, But whosoever seeks to be pleasing to Allah, even if it's at the displeasure of the people, that means I do what Allah likes, I don't care who likes it. I don't care if my boss doesn't like it. I don't care if my neighbors don't like it. I don't care if my family doesn't like it. I don't care if my wife doesn't like it. I don't care if my parents don't like it. I don't care who doesn't like it. I do what Allah likes and nothing else. Our Rasul Sallallahu said about this person that when they seek the pleasure of Allah even if it's at the displeasure of people that not only would Allah become pleased with them He would make the people pleased with them. He would make and force the people to be pleased with them. And this is the promise of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke nothing but the truth. So, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that if you seek to be pleasing to Allah, that means I don't care who doesn't like the fact that it's time for me to make salah. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care if it's time for whatever it is else that's going on. It's time for me to pray. I'm praying. Dropping everything and I'm making salah. I'm not waiting to the end of the day and I go home and make Dur Asr Maghrib Isha. Jama'ah. I, I don't know where fifth book you read that. But this is a, a, a this is this is a fool's way of making salah, man. Allah has said in the Quran that He has prescribed salah at fixed times, not with the exception unless you're working, unless you're going to school. I didn't I don't know if that tafsir or that explanation is out there, but inshallah I don't know everything. I don't care what my boss thinks. I don't care if I go to this job interview wearing this hijab yeah maybe they don't hire me but if they don't hire me because I'm wearing a hijab I don't need that job anyway that's a job I don't need anyway because if they don't want me to wear a hijab they certainly not gonna let me pray they certainly not gonna let me go to Juma. they certainly not gonna let me do anything that resembles the action of a Muslim so why would I even waste my time that to me would I would wear it everywhere, every job interview I went, just to see if this is a job I want to take or not. If you hire me with this, then maybe we might be able to work with something. Or you don't want to hire me because I have a lihya. Or I'm telling you that on Fridays, I have to go to Juma. They're like, oh, wait a minute, Friday is Juma. Come on, man, this is the middle of the day. You can't just leave work. Be like, look here, man. I will work. Part, I'll work morning time, I'll work night time, I'll work overtime, I'll work weekend time, I'll work Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, I'll work any other time. But Friday at noon is Allah's time. See ya. I'm out of here. No matter what you say. When we begin to think like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will begin to change your life and He will begin to change our condition. And I'm not telling you this just from reading in some books. You, I'm telling you this because I have put it to the test over and over and over again. I wouldn't be here right now doing what I'm doing if I didn't put it to the test. I've done it and I've seen over and over again how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never abandons his slave when his slave turns to him. Never, ever, without a doubt. There was one point 
just to give you a little personal experience, I don't like to put my personal stories in, but just to let you know, it works. And I've tried it many times. I had a job when I first moved to Florida. I was a new Muslim. Had left South Carolina and, and, and was trying to gain knowledge of my deen. And I, the only job I could take was a crazy construction job in Florida in the summertime, 90 degrees outside, man. 95 degrees with the humidity at like 87% outside dying, man. I'm not, I'm not made for this type of stuff. And on Friday, but I was doing it because this was the only job I can find and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of me. I went on Friday and told my boss, look, I gotta go to Juma. I gotta go, I'm gonna take a long lunch today, but I'll stay late. He was like, no man, there's no leaving. You don't leave this work site. I'm like, look, this is my religious obligation. I have to go to the Juma on Friday. He was like, look, if you leave the job, then you're fired. I said, well, I'll see you in two weeks to get my check, because I'm out. And I left. I just left. And I said to myself, Allah is sufficient for me, man. I don't need, no. I'm not going to violate my deen because I think I need something from the dunya. So I left, went to Juma, not knowing how I'm going to get another job. Not knowing how I'm going to take care of myself. I went to Juma, and I was leaving Juma, and I made the dua during the, the, the two, the two Juma, one of the ones our Rasul said is, is, is never unheard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I made one of those. So Ya Allah, my, my, my welfare is in your hands. I walked outside of Juma, and there was a brother who had just come from Philistine, a sheikh from Philistine, one of the most knowledgeable brothers I've ever met in my entire existence. And he came from Philistine and he, had a, he owned a pizza shop in Al-Quds in Jerusalem. And he came here to open up a pizza shop and establish his family here because of all the fitna in, in uh, Jerusalem at the time. And he came up to me asked what he said, uh, Brother Yusha, do you have a job right now? I said, actually no, I just quit today. He said, well I need somebody to work for me. And he hired me on the spot and gave me double what I was making at the construction job. And this is just one instance of about a thousand that I could give you of how when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He never ever lets you down. Because if He let me down, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. I abandoned three to four martial arts schools I had running full time in Florida. Doing well off, had more of the dunya than I knew what to do with. And left it knowing that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had for me to do. This was for me to do. I knew this was my calling. I needed to tell these people about Islam that I'm in this country that I'm from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never had me to worry about anything. Ever. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. When we begin to think like this, that we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else, <laughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us and begin to love us again. He'll begin to love us again. And when he begins to love us again, our Rasul said that a, 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 the Muslim does good actions so much until Allah loves him. And then when Allah loves him, he will tell the angels nearest to him, I love so and so, so you love them. And those angels will communicate that down to all of creation until the entire creation begins to love this person. This was what our Rasul Sallallahu had. This is what the Sahaba had and this is why the whole world was given to them. Because the creation loved them. Because even the non-Muslims whose countries they conquered loved them so much that when they decided to leave and try to hand the governorship back over to the people, the people would beg them to stay and adopt the deen of their conquerors in mass. Until the entire world was willingly under La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Because these Muslims put their priorities in place Allah came first, everything else came second